Hey guys, just wanted to upload another video to the uh, Bitcoin Fundamental series, also the uh, Macro Analysis series. Right now I'm looking at the uh, uh, Glassnode chart um, for Bitcoin mining difficulty, stretching all the way back to roughly almost 2010, um, all the way up to current price action right now. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, uh, the Bitcoin mining difficulty adjustment, essentially what it is is in the Bitcoin code, there's a feature that roughly every 2016 blocks mined, um, there's a uh, adjustment in the, in the uh, block reward to reflect the uh, amount of uh, hash power contributed to the network. So essentially, it's roughly every two weeks. Uh, now that it's not based on a two week time interval, it's based off that 2016 blocks mined, but essentially it it tends to occur every two weeks, roughly. Um, so essentially, uh, you, you have this feature that sort of uh, maintains a uh, steady level of supply in the market, meaning that no matter how much hash power you contribute toward the market, right, that supply curve remains relatively fixed. Um, and that'll be important. I'll come back on that later. But right now, I just want to look at this current chart and... Uh, with Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin is an asset that follows Metcalf's law, uh, otherwise known as the exponential gain function. Um, and, and when you see that type of chart and you're looking at a decade chart, when you look at the, the first half of the decade, you, you, just, you see this flat line, right? It's uh, when things move on an exponential curve like this uh, and you look, you look too far back, uh, there's a lot of different distinctions occurring here, but they're so minuscule compared to uh, what's happening right now that you can't even see them. Um, and I would make the argument that, you know, if you were to go back or you were to go to fast forward to 2030 and hypothetically we're in 2030, looking back at the beginning of the decade, uh, where we are right now, that you would see this same kind of flatline feature. That otherwise, all the distinctions and all the things we're looking at right now or we are looking at currently will just look like this in five years time or seven years time. Um, but anyway, I just want to change this chart just to take away that that portion of the, of the chart and look at this so roughly uh, that goes back to the second prior having not the last having but even the one before that at 2016 you can see it marked off by these uh, dotted lines right here um, <clears throat> essentially what you see is you know you, you generally see uh, this difficulty adjustment follow the hash rate if I pull up a different hash rate chart, I have this essentially marked off the same area. You can see that hash rate uh, generally just, you know, marches up uh, steadily with a few exceptions, notably right here. We'll, we'll touch on that later. Um, but the Bitcoin mining difficulty uh, adjustment basically follows that essentially, which makes sense because it, it's based off the hash power contributed to the network. Um, so essentially you see this, this march up and... Um, the way I interpret these uh, drops is essentially to be uh, capitulation among miners, which is a very, very significant um, event. Now, it, it, you know, one can precede the other, right? Like uh, capitulation can, um, you know, it can precede the fall in price or the fall in price on the, on the price chart itself can, uh, you know, encourage a capitulation among miners. Um, and, you know, that, that tends to happen also around the halving. Uh, but in this instance, you know, you have it, Bitcoin essentially was in the bear market uh, going, you have uh, essentially lower lows and lower highs on the macro. And then uh, volatility dries up. And uh, then when, when volatility picks up, it picks up in the direction of that trend that was established. And that's kind of when you see, uh, you know, this capitulation right here in the difficulty adjustment. So in order for this uh, difficulty adjustment to, to scale down that far, essentially what has to happen is um, a lot of hash power has to be removed from the network, right? And as hash power is removed, then, you know, following that two-week lag period, then the uh, difficulty adjustment will adjust and make it more profitable to mine, and uh, then, then you get this adjustment. Now, you have a similar thing that happens after the halving. So like right here, you'll see these, uh, after the halving, it's very common for this to happen. And 
I covered in a previous video, but it's also uh, relevant here. Um, after having, you typically see uh, capitulation among miners, right, or and hash power leaving the network, which seems counterintuitive, but if you think about it, uh, when this happens, this moment in time, essentially the block reward gets cut in half. So, um, you know, essentially, you it it, it becomes if if you're a miner on the edge of profitability, then it, this is the type of event that can push you over the edge. And it's the type of market environment where uh, people who are, who, are, who are on the edge of profitability going into that halving, not suddenly they're wiped out of the market and they have to liquidate their holdings and cash out. Uh, and that's, that's what I think you see here reflected in this downturn. In the, uh, what would you know be in the, if you were to go to the hash power, you could see that right here, right? Having turns on and then you see this uh, downtick in hash power. Um, and then, of course, after the two-week lag period, the uh, difficulty adjustment adjusts down to reflect that loss of hash power. Um, and, you know, you see the similar thing here, right? When basically, but this wasn't a halving. What, what happened here, this halving was a halving in price, right? Uh, price went from 6000 down to 3000 roughly pretty fast. Um, so a different kind of halving, but uh, the same effect here, right? Uh, you have having in the in the output and then having in the price itself which both have similar effects on the uh both the hash rate right see so the hash rate declined here and then of course the difficulty adjustment follows um this is an important topic i, I sort of covered it in the previous video um, talking about these minor uh, treasury capitulations what happens is when you have these big players depending on the size of the miner right, maybe it's an industrial scale miner um, so depending on the size, um, when they leave the market, if they leave the market, they can do so with uh, extreme conviction, you know, and it's sort of a capitulation type event. And uh, it can it can move the market very quickly and very suddenly in a way that, it, you know, can't be predicted by technical analysis. So it's one of those things where, like, you just can't predict when it's going to happen, right? I mean, you can, you can know that, you know, following the halving, that, that type of event is more likely to occur, but, uh, you know, as far as when it will precisely occur, I mean, there's just no way to predict that. Um, it doesn't really reflect in the price here, but, you know, if you were trading this at the time, you, you probably remember those sudden, uh, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20% uh, oscillations in price in, you know, a few minutes or a few hours and just very, very, uh, know quick volatile moves uh, as these big players exit the market um, so essentially on this price chart you just see price kind of steadily marching up and uh, you know if you could go to the Bitcoin hash rate you see the Bitcoin hash rate makes new highs and the difficulty adjustment also is uh, making new highs so right at this point in time um, you know, while we're not at, we're pretty far away from all-time high right now, we're at all-time high in hash rate. And, uh, we're, you know, we're also, this is also the most difficult time it's ever been to mine. And simultaneously, also the uh, time when the most hash power has ever been contributed to securing the network, uh, which is kind of how the network is designed and how it uh, will probably play out going forward. And it kind of shows how, you know, as time goes on, the network is just becomes more and more secure and and more and more harder to disrupt. You know, as this, as this trend continues. So, uh, also you can kind of see here's another indicator from Glassnode. It's sort of the hash ribbons. Uh, this isn't one I use too much, but uh, it's just basically taking these. Uh, or I'm sorry, not the hash ribbon, the difficulty ribbon. It's basically taking this difficulty adjustment that I'm showing here. You can see major dips here, major dips, major dips, and uh, just sort of uh, attaching a moving average to it. Um, and so, if you're if you're a fan of moving averages, maybe you like this indicator because um, it just shows it in a different visual interpretation. But essentially, what you get here, you can see your big capitulations, right? And then once you have the uh, lower period moving averages moving above the higher period moving averages and expanding. Then you kind of get the idea that 
you know, the capitulation is over, and maybe we have a macro bottom here, and uh, and essentially that's what we see, right? Um, we do see a little bit of uh, capitulation here, but if you notice here, the lower period moving averages never moved below the higher period moving averages. It's just a brief, sudden uh, V-shaped capitulation and recovery. Um, but you did see more of a prolonged uh, uh, capitulation here. And remember, this is on a fundamental level. Uh, so this reflects the uh, hash rate capitulation that we saw right here, right, as uh, miners got thrown out of China. and uh, But then we see the recovery, right? And we see this uh, uh, the lower periods start to move their way back above the higher periods. Um, and th that's a good sign, right? I mean, if you're, if you're bullish fundamentally on, on Bitcoin, this is what you want to see, right? Um, to give you a decent uh, degree of confidence that the fundamentals, you know, maybe you're not a huge fan of what price has been doing for the last few months, but uh, on a fundamental level, uh, you know, it's just business as usual. Uh, nothing really that frightening or out of the ordinary at all, really. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, just a little update to the uh, previous video I posted on Bitcoin hash rate, and uh, hope you enjoyed it. I think I still think there's some room to uh, for discussion on other topics, uh, so I may be uploading a third edition uh, relatively soon. So uh, just keep an eye out for that.